Aquarius, welcome to your Sunday Shuffle. Like always, these are general collective readings, not one-to-one -one private, which is to say they may or may not resonate, so take it resonates if it does not. And if there's more than one energy on the board here today, reverse those energies as you see fit. Hopefully, your new year is kicking off well for you. So, once more, Happy New Year's to you. What's going on? Hopefully, you will join me for the mid-month check-in for January, where I'm going to announce some channel updates that I'm excited about. What's going on? Oh, and some leeway, please. I am still learning to develop that muscle memory between reading the table and actually speaking into the mic. So if you hear my vocals kind of break away and become weaker, it's because I'm not directly speaking to the mic and I have to be aware of that. So again, some allowance, please. Show me, Aquarius. Show me, Aquarius. What is going on, please, for Aquarius? Show me, Aquarius. And the big table downstairs, no problem. I have this great um, arm, uh, mic arm, microphone arm, whatever you call it. And it, it goes directly to the front of my face. Can't miss it. <laughs> it's a little too uncomfortable. You have to have these really close. <laughs> but this one I have to do a little extra work for. That's okay. Seven of Cups. Six of Cups. King of Wands. Five of Wands. Okay, there's a little bit of discord here, but overall a sense of love or, you know, a sense of developing love or trying to remember the love or the feelings to find the positivity, I believe, in it. You're reacting to something at the emotional level. And there's times that you feel very confident about who you are, what you're doing, what you're about, and what you feel. And there's other times where it feels like everything's in disarray. Let's take a look. In other words, I guess you would call this life. Let's take a look at that Seven of Cups, please. Show me that Seven of Cups. Show me that Seven of Cups, please, for Aquarius. Show me that Seven of Cups, please. Page of Wands, Knight of Pentacles, and the Queen of Cups. Okay. I have some emotionality building in you, which is great. It's not to decrease, it's an increase. That's good. Okay, excellent. You are... Showing me emotional expansion in a healthy way, which is great. Seven of Cups is not my favorite, just like the Seven of Pentacles is not my favorite. Uh, but so long as people show me development as opposed to, say, stagnation, I'm all for it. That's great. Seven of Cups is kind of like emotional confusion. I feel a little bit of this. I feel a little bit of that. It's murky. Sometimes it's fantasy. Sometimes it's realistic. And sometimes we have a hard time navigating between those concepts, between what we're really feeling and what we think we're supposed to feel versus the fantasy of the feeling. And then also straight up options in love, but that's usually not the case. It's typically emotional confusion. It's a little bit of this, it's a little bit of that. We don't want to stay there. We want to get clear on what we feel. That way we can possess it and claim it within ourselves first because ha, ha, everything begins with the self. So the more we know about ourselves on the emotional level, the much more confident we tend to be as people. And that's what you're showing me is emotional confidence. That because you chose at some point on your timeline... To remain open and curious as opposed to being cut off into one particular feeling that might have been negative or confusing, you actually got really clear with yourself over time. Nine of Pentacles, time. There was a time when it perhaps you felt like your emotions were all over the place and you didn't always know what you felt. Sometimes it was a good day. Sometimes it was a bad day. Sometimes it was an upset day. Sometimes you were angry. Sometimes you were happy. So on and so forth. It's a mixed bag in there. And it was hard to tell which cup needed the most attention. Which feeling was real? And sometimes we're just feeling overly indulgent. It's a temporary feeling. It's not a permanent one. We need to sort these things out. And so because you determined to remain open over time to understand yourself and your feelings, you kind of blossomed into the Queen of Cups. And the King Queen of Cups, as we know, these are the most emotionally mature of the figures. They have no problem saying, this is who I am. This is how I feel about myself. This is how I love myself. And this is what I know to be true about me from the heart space. So you've done a heck of a job of perhaps your cups once upon a time, like I said, were scattered and confused and fragmented. You got consolidated over a long period of time. And you did that by remaining open, not shut off to what you feel. So that means exploring the hard cups as well as the positive ones. You know? And it puts you into a very beautiful place of a very full claiming heart. Okay, that's gorgeous. So I think all they're doing, honey, is showing me how far you have come in terms of emotional development and being confident about you and your heart. That's wonderful. 
That is beautiful. Let's take a look at that Six of Cups, please. Show me that Six of Cups. Show me that Six of Cups, please. Show me that Six of Cups. Show me that Six of Cups. Ten of Cups, the Lovers, the Moon. Oh my. Well, no. Wow. There are cups you are familiar with that are in your immediate proximity that are supportive as they should be. You have a lot of critical bonds in your life. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Lots of them. <laughs> oh, it looks like you've done a job of collecting soulmates and soul bonds over the year, for which we can have many, and they're not limited to just romance, guys. It's anyone whom we have a unique connection with where we just understand them. That's that one friend that's just not like the other friends. There's that one person we sometimes work with that's just not like other people we work with. And uh, yeah, sometimes it's a romantic partner where they're just not like any other romantic partner we've ever had in the past, so on and so forth. So I see that you have done a very careful job for the Aquarius I'm looking at cultivating very special relationships. And those are the ones that you tend to keep and maintain. They mean a lot to you. Um, so not only do you have a Six of Cups, you have a Ten of Cups. So I know you have a very extensive system. And you tend to form bonds very easily with people who you feel uniquely connected to. They're just not like other people you meet. And then you also have your general social emotional circle as well. So it's very beautiful and you're surrounded by, it may not be a lot of people, but some very critical characters in your life. That's lovely. And there's one here, <laughs> of course there is, it's called the lovers. They're emotionally connected to you too, but you don't seem to see them. It's with the moon. So this is either a lover, a strong connection that you have yet to meet, okay? But they're on their way. Or this is someone whom you know that had a very, very, that would be that unique soul bond, yes, plus the feeling of the lovers attached to it. So that one is absolutely on the romantic side. That's the kind of soul bond we can isolate, okay? And say that that one is romantic in nature. It's a very strong, powerful feeling. Some would equate it to a drug. It's just, it hits hard and on many levels, and that's the way it's supposed to. Otherwise, if you don't, you're not going to bond to it. So it hits differently, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, all of those things. It hits different, as the kids say. Um, not all is yet revealed about that figure. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I They give me as much to work with as... They give me as much to work with. I, <laughs> I don't. If I had more time, I would love to look at that. I don't know where they are in your life. Like I said, if they're incoming, I strongly suspect, however, that the lover here with the moon, while they're not within your sight and you don't interact with them, I don't believe in the 3D, they're still connected to you in another place, the place of dreams, The place of unclear intuition. In other words, you feel it from time to time, but you couldn't explain why. And it's vague. It has no real words. You don't have any idea that they're going to call or anything like that. That's on point intuition with people who you are connected with intimately and they're, they're right there. For instance, you think about that person they call. That's direct intuitive bonding. This is indirect. So we're talking, you talk to this person in dreams. We dream about them, we daydream about them, we have an impression of them in our waking time, but we don't know why. And it's not necessarily painful, bad, beautiful, or joyous. It just, we have that distinct impression of the other. You two are still connected. Just in a different plane. They're with you still, I suppose. You know? They're still with you. Even if it's not direct contact. And you have beautiful people surrounding you. I strongly suspect uh, that's an extensive family inner circle, um, very strong bonds with possibly spouses and kids. <clears throat> but there's, there's someone else in here that's uniquely tied to you. You dream of them sometimes, they dream of you, so on and so forth. I don't know why I'm supposed to relay this back to you, but it's here and your heart's in a beautiful space 
And like I said, it's claiming it's mature, so that means the Aquarius I'm looking at, you already know this, because you don't deny it. The King, Queen of Cups don't deny stuff like this. And just because they can't explain it doesn't mean that they deny it. It's what they feel. I feel that connection with them. And I accept that. I know it's there. Okay? Let's see. That King of Wands. Show me that King of Wands. Show me that King of Wands. Show me that King of Wands, please. Show me that King of Wands. <clears throat> I apologize. Very dry air. Let's see that King of Wands. Two of Swords. Seven of Pentacles. The Sun. Meanwhile, in your realistic world, in your 3D world, your energy is much preoccupied, practically speaking, with uh, strengthening your world as you understand it. You wonder how to do that. There are some elements that are stagnant and you're like, mm, I don't want them to be. So that's good. You are directly turning around and, and addressing another form of potential stagnancy. You did that with the Seven of Cups and you did a great job. And you're applying the same skill set to the Seven of Pentacles here. Again, great job. Uh, like I often tell people, how you approach one thing is how you do another. So with this one, in your 3D world, you're like, hmm, you know, Christina, some of these vines aren't growing the way that I expected them to, want them to, or need them to. I'm going to be addressing that. And it makes you happy to do so. So this is a project you will be directly dealing with hands-on to get something out of your material world out of stagnation. Like, for instance, I have my own version of this, which is tune in. <laughs> January in the mid-month, right? experiencing some channel stagnation thanks to YouTube's new changes. So how am I going to deal with that to make everybody happier, including myself? So you see, I've tried to pull things into an example. That way it's not just some vague random references. Um, I want people to understand what this kind of day-to-day -day stuff looks like. So it's known and it's going to require upfront work, but you're happy to do it if it means getting what you need out of it. Exactly. Okay, good job. Good job. Now what's this five of wands nonsense about? Show me that five of wands, please. Oh, Lord, isn't it the case? Something's always kicking up, kicking around, or causing a fuff. Mm. Let's see that five of wands, please. Some of that five of wands. Some of that five of wands. Some of that five of wands. Some of that five of wands, please. Let's do one more. Some of the five of wands. <clears throat> Excuse me. Two of Pentacles, Ace of Wands, Three of Pentacles. Uh, not everyone's going to cooperate with your new ideas. Well, <clears throat> if you need them to cooperate, you'll likely have to find common ground. Okay? It is looking like you need assistance from other folks. Friends, co-workers, helper functions. Not all hands are on board. That's unfortunate. Because I do trust the changes that you're making here. So do you, Ace of Wands. They feel correct. Not everyone's going to like it, but hey, if we did everything in our lives based on what we think other people like or don't like, well, what's the point of being alive? That's called passive, and I'm not into that. I don't think the Aquarius I'm looking at is either. Sometimes, honey, you just got to pull rank and say, I'm sorry. I Well, actually, sorry, not sorry. Um, I'm the one actively involved in this. I'm the one who put these things in place. I recognize the stagnation for what it is, and if you're not willing to make changes, that's on you, but I am because I want to see success, not failure. And this is how you know something's going to survive is your willingness to change and adapt. People will often fight tooth and fucking nail when somebody starts proposing changes. And that's, those are the people who typically fall to the wayside or go out like the dinosaurs. You don't adapt, you don't evolve, you don't change. You get no change. <laughs> You're showing me you are very psyched up to make implementations for very small changes. I hope that you cooperate. And I got some folks surrounding you who are questioning it and they don't see how it's feasible. You do. I actually trust your judgment on this more than they do because you're the one who's been keeping an eye on the stagnation for a while. So I see it as your plan, your way, and it looks sensical to me, to be honest. I It, it looks like very simple solutions. <laughs> and you can't get everybody to cooperate. Again, those people who are afraid of change are the most are the ones who are least likely to do anything worthy of remembering, lasting, or effective. If you are just hired to do what's always been done, then what's the point of you? If you're not willing to make change, then you die. That's it. And also, P.S., ask yourself, and this is what I ask myself, is stagnation where I'm trying to be? Is that how I'm trying to live my life? No. I trust this for you. 
but I'm also giving you fair warning. Be prepared for some kickback. Mm -hmm. Like I expect at January 15th. I'm going to be expecting some kickback. It's like, but honey, these are the changes. And they're good. Instead of arguing about it, maybe you can see why it's a benefit. You know? I say good on you. Keep on keeping on. Okay. Let's do some of these. I, I wish I knew more about the lovers in the moon. Obviously, that was the most intriguing piece by part. Um, but I suppose I just wanted to give you confirmation that they're still with you in that way. Okay. Whether or not you'll ever have direct contact with them, I can't see that today. Not in today's reading. It's too short. I don't know. Perhaps on the distant horizon. And for some of you, three might be an important number. On the distant horizon... Things are moving along in a particular pace, finding new course, new direction, or maintaining the course that you're on, but making improvements as you go along. Mm -hmm. And there it is, boo-boo. That's what I was talking to you about. There is the proposition of change that you understand will benefit everybody. That doesn't mean everyone's going to fall into place right away. Typically, when you have evolution or proposed change, people automatically start pushing back. I don't want to deal with change. It requires work. Well then, sounds like you don't need to be working for me. <laughs> it's like, you, you, when you need, when you, this is why I trust your judgment. This is why I'm trusting your assessment. There are small manageable changes that you, in your point of view, small changes, that's a little bit of tweaking. Like I said, you're not completely trying to dismiss whatever it is that you've built. Tweak it so it will stop stagnating. Move it forward a little bit more. Give it a little bit more air to the sails. You know what I'm saying? There it is right there. A little bit of change can go a long way. Okay? And it's looking to me like everybody in the community benefits despite the immediate... I'm not going along with that. Okay. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't, you're not willing to make sacrifices. You get no gains, babe. That's how it is. That's, it's a very simple formula. Okay. And it's, you're not even taking huge risks here. There's no major risks here. I see you adding, not subtracting. There you go, honey. Stick to your vision. There you are. There's your big star right there. The big heart. Yes, I saw that in your opening. You've done a heck of a job there and really cultivating your heart space, its boundaries, and its fulfillment uh, sense of self. You are showing me high levels of practicality here. Some of you might have some very distinct Virgo in your chart. We also have the medallions of Libra as well as Gemini. Okay. Balancing out the thought versus the practical functions. Understand. Okay. I hope this helped you. Put in the comments. Take care. Be well.